scientists may have finally uncovered why our extinct relatives the Neanderthals had protruding faces and giant nostrils. Digital reconstructions of Neanderthal skulls reveal the features helped them to breathe in more air while they were running and hunting. The species' jutting craniums may have also helped them to adapt to the cold when they migrated to Eurasia from Africa around 500,000 years ago. Previously, researchers have suggested Neanderthals evolved their strangely shaped skulls because they made heavy use of their large front teeth, perhaps even employing them as tools. But, the new study shows it gave Neanderthals a huge internal nasal passage that helped them blow more air in and out of their lungs more quickly. This turbo breathing allowed for a high energy ice age lifestyle chasing down big animals and burning large quantities of body fuel to keep warm, researchers said. In addition, the nasal passage meant our cousins could effectively warm and humidify cold, dry ice age air before it entered the lungs. The research was carried out by an international team of scientists, led by the University of New England in Armidale, Australia. To find out more about how this skull shape benefited the species, the team applied a range of sophisticated computer-based methods and simulations to digital skulls. These skulls were reconstructed using European Neanderthal specimens and modern human skulls from across the globe. Five Neanderthal skulls were imaged, including four from France and uncovered in Gibraltar. The study also included a big sample of modern humans from recent hunter-gatherers such as Arctic Inuit and African Kung to modern Asians and Europeans, as well as Ice Age fossil modern human. The researchers built 3D virtual Neanderthals and modern humans from CT scan X-ray images and then digitally crash-tested them with computer simulations. The simulations evaluated how each species' face responded to the loads imposed by heavy biting at the front teeth and predicted the behavior of air as it passed through the nasal passages. As well as humans and Neanderthals, the researchers also built a model of a more primitive fossil hominid species, Homo heidelbergensis, to provide data on a starting point from which both species evolved. The team found that the big, heavy, projecting face of Neanderthals is not particularly well adapted for heavy biting at the front teeth. Some modern humans are arguably better suited to this role, using less muscle force to achieve the same bite force, while developing less strain in the bone. Instead, Neanderthals were more effective at warming and humidifying the air they breathed than was the more primitive Homo heidelbergensis. But they were not as effective as modern humans, regardless of whether the modern humans were from cold or hot climates, researchers found. Where the Neanderthal excelled was in its ability to blow large volumes of air through its nasal passage into and out of the lungs. In this respect, the species was almost twice as effective as modern humans. This means that Neanderthals could get far more oxygen into their system before having to resort to mild breathing, which is undesirable as it is a less efficient way to take in oxygen. The researchers concluded that the distinctive, projecting Neanderthal face is an adaptation linked with an extreme, high-energy lifestyle. It may be because Neanderthals were routinely involved in strenuous activities, such as running down and killing large animals but it may simply be that they needed to burn a lot of oxygen just to stay warm in their ice age habitats or a combination of both writing in the journal proceedings B of the Royal Society of London the researchers led by University of New England scientist professor Stephen Rowe said Neanderthal nasal passage morphology may represent an adaptation to cold that improves conditioning of inspired air albeit a less efficient solution to that found in modern humans our results further suggest that the Neanderthal capacity to move greater air volumes may also represent an adaptation to cold, insofar as it could support a cold climate physiology. An alternative, not mutually exclusive explanation is that this ability reflects an adaptation to a more strenuous, energetically demanding lifestyle demanding high calorific intakes.